So I know what you're thinking. It's about damn time that I got off my ass and got you guys one of these. When in reality, you should be thinking that we have been driving way too many practical cars here on the old show. So to remedy that, let's look at an entirely impractical car, but one from a very practical car company. So without further ado, the tech review of the 2018 Lexus LC 500 V8. And I agree, it's about damn time. Now you may be experiencing a bit of deja vu because we have seen this engine before. As a matter of fact, we drove it with the Gucci san at Monticello Motor Club in the RCF. So that means it's a 5 liter V8 with 471 horsepower coming in at 7100 RPM and 398 pounds of torque comes in at a relatively aggressive 4800 RPM. 12.3 to 1 compression ratio, sends the power only to the rear wheels via a 10-speed automatic. Now before we press on, there is a party trick that you may remember from this engine in that it doesn't do the usual cylinder deactivation, which is something we see in 8 cylinders and even 6s nowadays. Instead, this switches cycle types. So under load, it runs in an auto cycle, and when it's on the highway, say, looking for more efficiency, it can switch to Atkinson cycle. So the interior design absolutely cashes the checks that the exterior design writes. And with that, Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, let me let a little design nerd fall out of my pocket. Uh, this is familiar if you've been in another Lexus as of late. But, you know, unlike Mercedes, where they debut an interior design in, say, the S-Class, and then it cascades down to the C-Class, almost unchanged, and BMW, same thing, 7 Series to the 5 Series. Here, there's some playful bits like this from the LFA or the IP from the new LS500 we recently drove. However, the rest of it is unique, and I love when car manufacturers take bold design and separate out the different cars by not carbon copying the interiors. And here, it's called a drape. And the drape is repeated from the door to the center console to the other door and even in the door panel, and it's it makes this whole thing stand out. That combined with the colors, the textures, the stitching, and almost more importantly, the satin metallic finish that's incredibly understated because it's not everywhere. It's like just wrapped around the vents, underneath the glove box with like almost hidden vents here, and then this wonderful, the only way to describe it, playful, almost this pageantry to a door handle. It's, anyway. Do you remember back to, uh, and I'm bringing up Mercedes again, uh, in the 70s and almost in the early 80s, Mercedes, they were engineered to a standard, not a price, and you definitely notice that on the inside. That's absolutely what you feel here. Although it, it looks like it came out of a Ridley Scott movie. And now moving on to driving dynamics, the front is a multi-link setup. The rear, guess what? Also a multi-link setup. The brakes, they vary from front to rear. In the front, it's a 15.7 inch diameter rotor with six piston calipers. In the rear, it's a 14.1 inch diameter rotor with four piston calipers. The wheels vary in size, the base car 20 inch wheels, performance package 21 inch wheels. The wheelbase, not exactly a small car here. It's 113 inches with 187.4 inch overall length. Length. Coefficient of drag, there has been some work in wind tunnel, is 0.33. Now we're going to spend some time talking about how all that comes to pass in the full first drive review, as well as the optional rear wheel steer system which this car is fitted with. Now there is one more piece of rather important business that you and I need to cover, and that is the fact that she is no lightweight. This is a two-seat luxury sport GT. 4,280 pounds. You and I are going to determine how that works in the full first drive review, so make sure you come back for that. In the interim, I want to leave you with a question. Uh, the entire time that I have been driving this, since for about 10 days, uh, I am scratching my head thinking, what the hell does this thing compete with? Because there's the obvious that's always burned on my brain, which you and I spend a lot of time talking about on the show. But I feel this segment, the basically what this thing costs, and the general concept of two-seat power and from a company like this, this is a growing segment, almost like it's growing faster than the mid-size car segment, like there's more options on offer. 
Anyway, let me know what you think is a direct competitor to this and why. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until I see you next time in the full first drive review of the 2018 Lexus LC500, bis später.